would you please turn to Luke chapter 22. That's the third gospel in the New Testament, Luke chapter 22. been a wonderful day, wonderful celebration of the resurrection. God is just so good, so good. And uh, that's all you can say uh, because, well, you could say a lot more, but you have to speak in generalization sometimes when you're trying to summarize God because He is so much more than words can describe. So if you use a word like awesome, amazing, or unbelievable, God is all those things and more. So God's good. Thank God for the resurrection, for His personal interest in us, for the life that He's given us. Lord willing, this next Sunday, we will have visiting with us Pastor Tony Thomas and his wife. And they will be uh, attending church in Miami Beach as well as just looking at looking at the uh, potential of the ministry of Miami Beach and have, so they can have something tangible uh, to, to present to their church. So please be praying for Miami Beach Baptist, for the Thomas family. If the Lord would make that the right connection to lead that ministry would certainly be our heart's desire. Pastor Thomas has been texting me all day. He texted me a little while ago, man, I'm really, I got my tickets and we'll be there and we're really excited about coming. And so I don't know what the time frame will be, but this weekend they'll get a lot of answers to the questions that they need to have in order to be able to tell their church to explain to their church the things that God has been doing that are connections that are intangible it's amazing how God connects things isn't it we're praying and asking God they're praying and asking God and God puts the two together and says here it is Here's the answer to your prayer to both them and us. And uh, I just, I'm just amazed at God. He's wonderful. He's a wonderful, amazing God. Well, here we are in Luke chapter 22, and this is the service that we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. This would be the Feast of the Unleavened Bread that Jesus was participating in. And this is the, to bring us into our context this evening. This is when Jesus sent Peter and John to prepare the Passover. He said, you're going to go into town. You're going to see a man that's got a pitcher of water. And follow him into the house where he goes and say to the good men of the house, you know, where's the guest chamber? Where shall I eat the Passover? You know, Jesus wants to know where we're going to have the Passover at your place. And this is sort of similar, isn't it, to what we saw last week when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And he said, go into town, and when you see a young, or you see a, a uh, ass tied and a young colt with it, go and unloose it. When they ask you why you're doing that, tell them the master needs it, and so forth. And it's also kind of like when uh, Jesus, you know, they ask the question, does your master pay taxes? And Peter said, um, yeah, I think. And so, anyway, they said, who was it, Peter or was it Andrew? It was Peter that said yes, was it? Yeah, it was Peter. So then they said, uh, Jesus said, go, you know, cat, put, take a hook, and cast in the sea, pull a fish out, and take a coin out of the fish's mouth, and go and pay our taxes. And so, <laughs> I love it that God can do things that could be done in a, in man's strength, that God does those things in a way that's clearly not man's strength. And this would be similar in this text tonight. In verse 13, the Bible says of Luke 22, And they went and found as he had said unto them, 
and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And I want us to notice especially verses 21 through 23. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. So Father, I pray that you would give us understanding of your word this evening and give us fear accordingly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is Luke's account of the Passover, of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. And there are really two things this evening about this text that I believe are notable. That is, they give us a little bit of an insight into the Lord's Supper in a way that is from a different perspective or a uh, just a just an extra perspective, if you will, from what we see in great detail in 1 Corinthians 11 when Paul deals with the Lord's Supper and from what we see in uh, Matthew and so forth with the Lord's Supper. So here, let's look at our text very briefly. First of all, we know the circumstances that brought them into the house. We know the circumstances that brought Jesus to Jerusalem. Certainly he is reading the scripture speaking of being betrayed. One of the first things that I would like to point out in our text this evening, though, is that Jesus gave the Passover, the cup and the bread, to the disciples, and uh, but he himself did not drink of the fruit of the, uh, did not drink of the cup or eat of the bread. So take this and divide it among yourselves. Take this and spread it among yourselves. And so he break it and said, this is my body. And I think it is significant that we understand that the Lord's Supper is not for Jesus. The Lord's Supper is for us. The purpose of it is for us to remember the sacrifice, the cost, to God. And I believe what's important in the text this evening in understanding that Jesus said, take this and divide it among yourselves. I'm not going to drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God. And in making that statement, Jesus really helps the disciples to understand that He's there for them. They are not... He is there for them. They are not there for Him. I think it's important for ourselves as believers really to recognize our need for Jesus and to really have that in alignment with our understanding of the privilege of God using us. I like the use of the word apostle instead of disciple in our context as well this evening because apostle carries it with the idea of a sent one or a messenger and the idea being that the apostles were gifted or foundational gifts to establishing the church. So these are some special individuals specifically set apart to establish the church, and yet we very well see that though God had a specific purpose in their lives or a plan for them beyond the cross in the future, that they were the ones for whom His body and His blood was shed. Christian, you and I must be very, very careful to not get so caught up in our service for the King as to feel as though God needs us when in reality we need God. This has been one of the keys Brother Charlie has been emphasizing in his Sunday school class on prayer, is that prayer is about our need. And it is a very prideful perspective when we think as we pray that somehow we're praying in a conversational way 
Because, and you say, why is that arrogant? Well, because it ignores the fact that we need God and it assumes that God sort of needs us. And the reverse could not be more... The, the reality could not be more reversed. My friend, we 100% need God. And when Jesus came and gave His... had His supper, if you will, with the disciples, He gave them the fruit of the vine. He gave them the bread and broke it for them. But it wasn't for Him, it was for them. And I will say this evening that for you and I to remember the Passover, or that is, for you and I to remember more accurately the Lord's Supper, is for us to remember that we need Jesus. I, for one, do not like to uh, sensationalize the cross for two reasons. One, because I think the sensationalization or sensa to sensationalize the act of Christ, and by act I do not mean pretend, I simply mean the act which was accomplished of Jesus dying on the cross. To sensationalize that is to minimize the injustice of it. In other words, we focus on the torture of it. We focus on the gruesomeness of it, but we do not focus so much and we focus on Christ's suffering, but we do not focus on the fact that Christ suffered in our place and that He rightfully was God. And it's very important for us to recognize who Jesus is and who God is and who we are and what we deserve. And so this body and blood being shed and Christ saying to His disciples, take, eat, take and drink. Divide this among yourselves. It's significant because we see in it our need. And you're a prideful believer if you do not continually fall down at the cross seeing your need. We need Jesus. And the idea that God needs to be glorified is inaccurate insofar as God ought to be glorified. There's a difference between God between God uh, should saying that God ought to or God should be glorified and God needs to be glorified. My friend, God will be glorified. And so God doesn't need us to glorify him. God deserves to be glorified. Do you see the difference in perspective? We have to be careful sometimes as believers not to slip into this this is what I do for God mentality when the reality of it is God does every single thing for me. So when Jesus says without me ye can do nothing, that is as accurate a statement as you could possibly make and apply to every aspect of the Christian life. Without Jesus you can do nothing. And I believe that's the emphasis in the fact that, or that is one of the things that the Holy Spirit is using Luke to emphasize as he points out that Jesus said, divide this among yourselves instead of let's divide this among us. Okay, the second thing that we find in our text is, of course, a similar warning to what we find in Luke, I mean, sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and of course that is that in verse 21, but behold the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. I cannot help but think that this certainly is one of the names that Paul is thinking of when he says, there are some that are sick among you and there are some that sleep. I can't help but think on this day that Judas is someone that Paul would have known or known of and would certainly have been thinking of when he said, there is one who took of the Lord's Supper unworthily and he's dead. He's one, that, he's one by name that I know of. Did you ever think about that? Don't very often when I read 1 Corinthians 11, don't very often think, oh yeah, Judas partook of the Lord's Supper unworthily, but he'd already betrayed the Lord Jesus when he came to the table. And here he is partaking of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. 
And do you think that that was one went worthily? Not on your life. He literally, at the table, had betrayed the Lord Jesus, and he knew it. Nobody else but Jesus did. But he knew it. And friend, all I can say is he didn't survive very long afterward. And so, this evening, I do not think for the audience that we have here tonight that it would be necessary to go to 1 Corinthians 11 and warn you of the gravity or the importance of partaking of the Lord's Supper unworthily. Judas did so, and he's a good example that you don't want to do that. So that's... We could talk more about that on this day, but I think it's unnecessary to comment further than that. Is it? Wouldn't that be true? I think everyone here knows what happened with Judas betraying the Lord Jesus. I'm impressed as we were in our text this morning in Matthew 27. And Judas, beginning of verses 2 and 3, was Judas goes before the high priest realizing what he's done. And they said, what's that to me? See thou to it. Whatever. We don't care. And he threw those 30 pieces of silver down and went out and hanged himself. And I cannot help but think that foremost in Judas's mind is the fact that he sat at that table when the Lord Jesus said, this is my blood which is shed for you, this is my body which is broken for you, and Judas realized, because of me. Unworthily. And so this evening, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, let's see to it that we don't partake unworthily. Father, I pray that You would help us to have the gravity as well as the understanding of our need as we partake in the Lord's Supper this evening. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take just a couple of minutes. We'll take just a couple of minutes as the Lord leads to just do business with God, to examine ourselves so that we would be judged by God. And uh, then we'll proceed. And I'll ask the men to come and help after that with the Lord's Supper.